Hey guys, how's it going? It's Richard Plunkett here from the Puppetum Geek, and today, guys, I'm going to show you how I set up my fly cam. In particular, I'm using the fly cam 5000 by the guys over at the Sin City. Now the first thing you want to do is set up your fly cam. Now I have it here already set up using the stabilizer mount as well which comes with the fly cam 5000 which is really handy. I suggest if you can buy something similar to this uh, it helps a lot when actually setting up your fly cam because it just means you don't have to pick it up, wave it around, you can just have it already right here ready to go. What you want to do next is take off your top plate and then mount your camera. So I'm using a small lightweight camera here which is really great when using a fly cam even though it can support a lot more heavier cameras as well. However, having a lighter camera just means the overall rig is really light as well. Now you want to make sure that the camera is nicely centered on the plate. You don't want the plate to be too top heavy or too back heavy as well. So just nice and centered uh, as well if you do have a zoom lens have the lens situated where you want it to be as well so okay so once you've tightened that camera to the plate you can pop it on top of the stabilizer now with this particular stabilizer you have these bolts which lock the actual plate into place now what I'm gonna do is not fully tighten these but I have these fairly loose so I can actually move the plate forward and back when stabilizing what I'm going to do now is loosen the bottom bolts as well, which actually moves the plate left to right. So that will help us as well when stabilizing. In this particular stabilizer, we've got these cylinder weights, which work quite well, and they're housed in these little sort of compartments. However, when you do have to remove weights, you do actually have to remove the covers and remove the plates from them. Now, what you want to do with the weights is have them all the way to the edge of the bottom plate. From here, we can actually do minor adjustments if we have to when actually stabilizing the overall rig. So generally, I like to start off with two plates on each side of the bottom plate and then go from there if I do have to actually add any more weight. As I mentioned earlier, having it lighter does help overall, especially when you're using this rig over the course of a day. So you definitely want to keep it as light as possible. So I'm just putting these covers back on just because when actually stabilizing, you want to make sure you have everything that you're going to have on the actual rig itself on there. So it, like every small little weight will affect the way the stabilizer position itself. So if you do have an additional microphone or if you have a flip out screen, you want to make sure everything's in position how you would actually have it when actually using the rig because every minor adjustment makes it very crucial when actually stabilizing it. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is focusing on the leveling of the actual camera. So what we can see now is that the camera is tilting forward. So I'm going to untighten these here and push the camera back just ever so slightly till it's really straight. Just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna tighten those up. Now I'm not too sure how much you can actually see there. So you wanna make sure these are nice and tight as well. But the camera seems to be ever so slightly tilting my left. So I'm gonna loosen the bottom ones here and push it towards our right hand side and see how we go. Me in particular, I don't like the actual camera itself completely straight as because when you are moving forward with the stabilizer, the camera sometimes tends to sort of either tilt forward or back depending on where your weights are positioned. So having that or depending on what kind of shot you're trying to get uh, determines where or how you actually face what type of angle the camera is facing. So if you like it a bit up, if you're going down, so you still get that nice angle. So maybe what you actually want to do is have the camera tilting up a bit. So when you're running after someone, the camera sometimes tends to sort of tilt a bit forward and that way you get a nice clean shot. Now, if you're still having issues stabilizing your rig, what you can still do is extend this pole down here, which will allow some of the more weight to be a bit more distributed, especially if you have a lot more heavier camera. Now, because we do have a smaller camera, we're going to have it the actual rig itself nice and small. And one of the things I like to generally start anyways is to actually have the stabilizer itself as small as I can and then you work your way down because generally when you're moving through crowds and everything you don't want to have actually a huge rig, you want to have it as small as you can be and as light as it can be as well. Okay, so let's try the drop test again. One, two, three, 
two. So we get about two seconds there, which isn't too bad. Now, if I wanted to get it to three seconds, I think I would have to get rid of all the weight inside of here, which is actually pretty good. However, keep in mind that this camera is really lightweight. It's the Nikon D3300, really lightweight camera. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a really just good secondary camera that I use. And, you know, it actually makes the rig super light, again, compared to my 60D, and I reckon I can hold this all day. Now, again, one thing I like to do is, even though this stabilizer uh, rig is really handy, however, it, you know, sometimes, it, as I can see right here, it's just tilting just a bit to the right. So what I'm going to do is just put it on there, and let's see if I can get this facing towards me, so you guys can see that. Just ever so slightly. There you go. Perfect. So that's how you actually set up your stabilizer rig. As you can see, it takes about five or 10 minutes to get it nice and precise, depending on how heavy or light your camera is. Now, if you use the same camera all the time, I recommend just keeping it as it is, and then you, that way you have to do small minor adjustments. If you do have a carry bag for it, you can pack it away. It just means that you do have to do this whole procedure again. And you know, generally over time you get better, you know how much weight you can take, you know where all the knobs and all the screws need to go to make sure you get it nice and stable. However, one thing in particular, as I mentioned earlier, this is the Flycam 5000, which comes with the Yoko stabilizer rig as well. Now, it's really easy to use. Now, like most stabilizer rigs, you will have a hollow socket right at the bottom of the handle, and it just slips into there. So if we just put this in the right place, you have two handles which help distribute the weight of the actual stabilizer. Now, depending if you do have a much more heavier camera or you know a heavier rig, this will definitely help distributing that weight and less strain on your shoulders. As you can see here, it's nice and stable and it really does help distribute the weight as you're using two arms as opposed to just the single arm and going like a rodeo show. Now, keep in mind a stabilizer rig isn't something that you would want to use on all your shots. It just complements what you're trying to achieve in your overall short film or sort of cinematic sort of thing that you're trying to do. And I think it's something that definitely has something to it, just that nice you know, flow of the camera. However, you do want to keep in mind and make sure you count how many shots that you do with the stabilizer rig because I think it can be also overused. Nevertheless, though, it's something I recommend having in your bag of tricks when you're going on a shoot or on location just because you never know when you want to capture that moment or you're trying to get that shot. I definitely think a stabilizer rig can definitely achieve that because it has a whole variety of uses and just something make your life a bit easier. Now I'll put a link down below to the Flycam 5000 as it comes with a ton of extra things like the Yoko stabilizer mount, the actual stabilizer holder as well which is really handy and I highly recommend getting that alone. But also the actual rig itself is quite useful as it can support up to small cameras like the D3300 to red cameras even which is also really great. Anyway guys, hopefully this tutorial did help you and will help you actually achieve greater shots with your stabilizer now that you know how to actually properly stabilize it. Anyway guys, thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.